It was Africa's creative tradition which drew British talent Adam Court to move from Paris 12 years ago. He supplied his original work to the Ochre Furniture Design Studio, then became a partner, and today they ship to the UK and the US. You have a very diverse background in fine art, fashion and film production, among many other things. And how has this influenced you as a furniture designer? Well, all of those things I did, I was exploring. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no idea. I knew I wanted to do something creative and something visual. I love them all still. And I think you have a consciousness, you have an awareness, and you absorb and you feed off all of these things. All of those things feed me in terms of my creative process. It's not one thing, it's all of these things. And you have a radar and you just pick up these things and um, you're receptive to everything around you. I notice all this incredible furniture around us. So what are the characteristics of a signature ochre piece? I like it when things are a little bit off kilter. Sort of a two plus three equals six. I love asymmetry when things are a little bit unpredictable or unexpected. So those things kind of provoke me and excite me. I have an emotional response to them and an intellectual response to them. Adam first designs the form which excites him then figures out its practical engineering. And so I always try and create a piece that, you know, sometimes I start off making something perfect, and then I would just kind of give it a, a twist, something that will um, upset it in some way. And then I find that much more interesting, much more exciting product. When asked whether it's an art piece or a functional item, Adam's answer is, why not both? How has design impacted your personal life? Well, design's been part of my life forever, basically. And um, I think we all have too much stuff. I think we are invariably too materialistic and we collect too much clutter, too much stuff around us. So I think in terms of design, what has design done? It's made me more thoughtful about what I choose, what I want to have around me. It's really about you curate and you apply a quality process to your decision making rather than just be attracted by its surface value. Since every piece is looking for its ideal place in the world, Adam took us to a house where much of his work has found a home. Designed by architect and SIOTA director Greg Truen, who Adam often works with, it uses this inverted pyramid roof to open up 360 degree views. This place is absolutely stunning. Why do you think your designs fit so well in this space? So this is a very contemporary home, as you can see, but I think Oka's product fits very well in. You could take this product, it could go in a Georgian Victorian property, you could put it in a New York penthouse. It really depends on materials, finishes, and of course, the fabrics and the colors you're working with. There are some beautiful pops of color here. Why did you particularly choose these? We've got an open plan space, and we've got several seating areas. So how do we kind of like designate and demarcate one zone from another? So instead of just having this continual endless flow, we need to punctuate spaces and kind of demarcate them. So color works very handily in that sense. So here we've got color and in the background area there, we've got a different, more darker tonal palette. And as we come through to the living room, very, very light, very gentle, very, very soft palettes. So each area has its own temperature, its own character, its own personality. How do you normally choose materials for your pieces and why did you use these specific ones? The clients here specifically wanted to work with velvets. They wanted a rich, lush texture to the materials and to the fabrics. So they actually said, we want to work with velvets. So we found the appropriate colors. You'll see that there are lots of stone finishes to the tables. So we're working with granite and marble um, materials like that. And they're very, very, very neutral colors. And of course, there's a lot of timber. And leaving the timber raw and natural, and very organic looking. So keeping the color palette narrow, but also the material palette narrow as well. So organic and neutral, and just letting these pops of color just sort of like punctuate the space here and there. The large kitchen slab anchors a sculptural centerpiece. The oven is integrated and the cool stone is balanced out by the warmth of wood and copper fittings. With the living area making the most of the natural surroundings, Greg put the bedrooms and his study one floor below. You are the homeowner and the architect of this yeah. incredible space and I can imagine it's something that's really close to your heart, but how has that sort of influenced you and what are the important things you've wanted to keep in this project? 
Well, I wanted to um, retain the sense that we were on the mountain, you know, and kind of the mountain almost kind of sweeps through the house. A lot of the plant material is indigenous, which is fantastic because it brings the birds and we've got bees and insects and it's, it's, that was actually has been a really nice surprise about um, living here. But it was also to disconnect from the city. You, know, you kind of drive up quite quickly from the city up this very busy street and then you kind of come up and you're dumped in this landscape which is um, very disconnected. So yeah, that was a big thing for me. The inverted pyramid roof creates clerestory windows to capture unbeatable mountain views. How have you made sure that each level gets enough light? Well, the challenge really was because some of these spaces get quite deep, um, was to figure out how to bring light into deep spaces. So I've typically used a series of gardens and courtyards that kind of push down in, in, into the building and bring light into those um, deeper spaces. Well, Greg, have you ever been tempted uh, to create, with your experience, to create uh, your own furniture? Yeah, I think it's something architects are, are very interested in and do from time to time. So I designed that table for Oka, the Plan Alto, which is based on some of the uh, work that the Brazilian modernists did. So it's, an, it's a reference to m my design heroes as, as a younger designer, I suppose. In the two years it took this architecture and design team to complete the house, they managed to include everything which Greg needed with zero clutter. I must say, I love how this master bedroom opens up yeah. the rest of the house. It's almost yeah. like you have the entire floor to yourself. It is really amazing. You can have this really big space here or you can kind of shut this down and, and you've got a much more intimate, smaller space. Oh, and this view, that is absolutely incredible. I can't imagine what it must be like to wake up to this every day. Yeah, it's really amazing. I actually wish I could spend more time here in the mornings. You know, you kind of wake up and you watch the birds and the bees and it's, it's just fantastic. I can't help but notice an impressive bathroom and closet space over there. Well, I, you know, I just wanted a very functional space. So I travel a lot, so I wanted everything kind of easily accessible and space for lots of suitcases and um, just a functional space. So yeah, it's, it's been very helpful. As comfortable as the bathroom, wardrobe and master suite are, the owner's favourite is the living room and pool area to take a swim or a cocktail as the sun sets over the city. Thank you guys so much for showing me around today. Now I know you both are colleagues, but what was it like working on such a personal project together? Oh, that's a good question actually. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was quite a stressful project because it was it was so um, so it's personal. Close to home. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, it's been amazing. I mean, you've 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 walked around and you've you've seen, you've seen the result. I think there's a, a seamlessness between the architecture and the interior, which is um, one of the things we always try to achieve. Yeah, so no, I've, I've been delighted with the process and the outcome. We didn't want to create a massively choreographed or coordinated interior. There was a lot here to work with already. Mm. And we wanted to create a space that was relaxed, restrained, comfortable, easygoing, that it felt like it had grown that way over time. And I think we've achieved that. Mm. And, and Greg knows what he wants. You know, he, he knows what he wants, so it's great, great getting that from the client. Mm. Well, here's a cheers and a toast to many more collaborations from the two of you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, cheers. Also a director at Oka, both Greg and Adam are extremely proud that their South African furniture is now selling in London, Miami, Chicago and soon New York.